65th successor of St. Peter. I'm Philippa Hitchin. And in this historic day, the city and the Vatican is abuzz with activity. We go live now to the heart of it all, Vatican's St. Peter's Square, where Chris Altieri is standing by to tell us all about it. What's going on, Chris? Uh, good evening, Linda. Yeah, I'm in the square, as you say, and I'm observing what is going on. And uh, there is uh, not the uh, swelling scene of the recent days with the, uh, the final Angelus and the final audience of the Holy Father on Sunday and Wednesday, but there certainly is more activity than usual for this time in the, uh, the early Roman evening. Uh, there are uh, even now uh, some good-sized groups of children who are coming through the security checkpoint and making their way into the basilica. Uh, there are also some smaller groups of young people gathered. Uh, and I noticed the Romans who were making their way across the square, the uh, uh, notably implacable Romans who have uh, sort of airs of uh, business as usual, perhaps a little bit more deliberately put on than usual, uh, many of whom, however, are stopping, and whether out of force of habit or for some other reason, are looking up at the window of the Pope's study. Uh, there is a, a, a sense of, uh, again, uh, business as usual in the city, but again, one that they seem to be uh, trying, uh, again, to affect, as if... Uh, the story is becoming only now uh, real. Thank you very much, Chris. And in fact, that is the heart of the Vatican where much activity will take place in the following days. And as we too symbolically say farewell to the Pope, whom we have been following closely and reporting on for the past eight years, we take a look back at some salient moments. To do just this, Veronica Skersbrick asks a Jesuit historian, Professor Norman Tanner, for a brief historical overview of Pope Benedict XVI's pontificate. Pope Benedict XVI was a...